All right, I think we're about ready to debut the big change. And the big change is right here in this very house. I think you're going to really enjoy what I have in store for you. So I'm going to ask the chat, are you ready for this new development, this revolution in Animal Crossing mornings? Because I think you're going to be very excited about when, when you see it. All right, here we go. Oh, I forgot my glasses. Oh my God, thank you so much, Leah, for pointing that out. I mustn't forget my, my glasses. These are my new glasses. I think you're going to, I think you're going to really dig them. Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't think, you're going to say that you are ready, but you honestly, you're not. All right, here we go. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome to the very first episode of Animal Talking. A new, a new live late night in the morning talk show that I'm very excited to have you um, uh, join us for. Uh, please, uh, first of all, give a big shout out to our band leader, uh, the great Adam Nickerson. Say hello, Adam. Hello, hello. Adam, how are you doing? What do you What do you think about this crazy experiment that we're that we're uh, trying here on the show? Uh, I think you know that I think it's ridiculous and amazing at the same time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hey, and the great John Drake. A f I, I'm hoping a future guest on the show will be with us. John, I'm glad you're here in the channel because I was actually planning to invite you to be a guest on Animal on an upcoming episode of Animal Talking. I'm hoping this is going to be a long running feature. Uh, I fully expect to have uh, all kinds of celebrity guests here on the show. Um... <laughs> so... Um... Thank you to thank you to Adam and thank you to Leah and thank you to everyone who helped put this set together. I had this idea less than 24 hours ago um, and we very, very, very quickly assembled a fully functional uh, armed and operational late night talk show set uh, down here in the back in the in the basement of my house. So now come if you, if you come over here, this is where I do my opening monologue. I'm gonna have jokes, I'm gonna have topical humor, I'm gonna have comedy. Um, just to let you know, our first guest on the show, uh, tonight, she's gonna, she's gonna come down and join us in just a moment, is, uh, the great Naomi Kyle, former host of The Daily Fix on IGN, now a very, very popular YouTuber, internet streamer, host, actress, uh, multi-talented, quadruple threat, all kinds of stuff. She's gonna be joining us, uh, very soon. Let's jump right in. Let's get on with this. I'm gonna take my position over here, uh, behind the desk, and, uh... I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, this is going to work. If if everything has worked, Naomi is currently in the green room or exiting the green room as we speak and is ready to come join us. So let's give this a try. Let's give this a try. Um, please welcome our celebrity guest, Naomi Kyle. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Is it going to work? <laughs> yes! Yeah. It's going to work! It's Hi, going to work. Oh my goodness. We got it working. We got it working. Hey, everybody. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm so excited to be here, truly. This, this, is, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being uh, the first guest on the inaugural edition of um, Animal Talking, our new I Animal Crossing talk show this is a genius idea and i feel very honored to be one of your first guests oh yeah, this is great wait hold on well, i don't <laughs> i just did the wrong emote entirely here this is going to be a happy emote there we go <laughs> oh that's hilarious yay We're so happy to be here 
<laughs> I gotta say, I gotta take a minute here to just say how pleased I am with how well this turned out. As it turned out, uh, and, and this is really a testament to Animal Crossing, just like you know how 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 amazingly easy it was to put um, a talk show set together just based on uh, the items that I already had in my house or were able to acquire from uh, Leah and Adam and other people um, who uh, helped us out. And Greg Miller is going to be a, has already agreed to be a guest on the show in the near future. It's going to be more news. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be more news uh, coming up regarding um, future guests. Uh, but let's but never mind about future guests. Let's let's meet our current guest, Naomi. Thanks so much for joining us today on the first episode of Animal Talking. Thanks for having me. I love your mug. Did you get a new mug? It's that I actually borrowed this from my wife. This is a Dodo Airlines mug. Genius. Genius. I, I'm gonna what I'm probably gonna do is drop the um the magazine and have a get I have a, I actually have a nice pink mug that I could put on the desk here for guests. Ah yes. Oh that's the one I, I gave you, I think, yesterday. Yes, that's right. And you yeah, gave yeah. me yeah, you helped me out a lot actually. You came by and gave me some of these items. You gave me a couple of the lovely the lovely plants, the greenery. Adam, <laughs> again, thanks for joining us as band lead. How are you enjoying it over there on your little corner of the set? I think it's pretty exciting, although you keep choosing a camera angle that's excluding the best part of your set. Oh, the raccoon? Oh, no, you, no, look at that right there. You can see the host, you can see the guest, you can see Adam, and I finally found I finally found a good um, uh, way to use these fucking awful, awful raccoon figurines that you've been sending me as a special tribute. <laughs> as a special... So good. <laughs> As a special tribute to Adam, I finally found a place to put this awful piece of chintz. Naomi, again, thank you for joining us. YouTuber, internet influencer, celebrity, a former IGN host, now host okay. of your own uh, show last week in gaming on YouTube. You, What don't you do? I don't know. I don't do the dishes a lot of the time in my house. But you don't that's do... nowhere here nor there. That's Kyle. That's Kyle. <laughs> Wouldn't that be your fiance's job. job, though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes, I do that laundry makes sense. mostly. <laughs> um, I think the way this is probably going to work is we are going to have a lot of like celebrities from the world of, of gaming here on the yes. show because those are the people that I know the best and those are the people that are most likely to play Animal Crossing. Even though, again, Brie Larson, Elijah Wood, all kinds of big-time celebrities are playing the game, I'm hoping to get uh, them as well. And um, <laughs> every time he does the little badum-tish, <laughs> it kills me. Um but so so you're the, so you really are you really are the perfect guest uh, to have here on the show as the inaugural oh, guest. I want to go back to the beginning. I want to ask you. So you obviously um, built your uh, reputation and your brand and your career in the world of games uh, at IGN. I want to go back to the beginning. Go. How did it all yeah. start for you in the world of gaming? Like, do you, what what are your earliest gaming memories? My earliest gaming memories were uh, okay. Well, I had a, a friend, my mom's friend's kids. They had the really probably the first uh, Nintendo console. It was the first time I'd ever experienced a video game. They took us down to this basement in this house they were renting. And I played for the very first time Donkey Kong Country. And that was my first foray into gaming. I was hooked. Uh, it, they had to pull us away from the console, I remember, to get us to leave. Um, and then after that, it, my first console um, was the PlayStation 1. So I just played that a ton. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Final Fantasy VII, Star Wars Phantom Menace, all of the good games from PS1. Not Star Wars Phantom Menace, though. That one was a little bit... But the, 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 pod, race, the pod, pod Racer one. game that came out of Episode 1 was actually really good. I never played that one, sadly. Oh, you missed out. Well, the good news is, out. guess what? It's, it's coming, coming back. It's coming to the Switch. I We're know. all going to get to play it online, which I'm very excited about. So excited about that, too. Adam's yeah, over there clapping. Get to play it. Um, Adam, <laughs> Adam, Adam's over there clapping by the, uh, by the drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it starts for you with the PlayStation One. Uh, yeah. Were you were you a casual gamer, or were you like were you playing hours a day? Were you uh, were you a hardcore as gamer as a kid? As many hours as I could. My parents were very big on us going outside when I was a kid, so they would only let us play a certain amount of time. It was very limited, but we, we every chance we got, we played. And uh, and then I also had friends who like had the 64, so I, I didn't have a lot of I didn't have any Nintendo console until the Wii. So my first, if, like I would go to my friend's house and play Mario 64. 
and that that was like my Nintendo experience growing up. And I was one of those kids who could never afford a Game Boy or any of those handheld device like game consoles. So I was really bummed about that growing up. Everyone else had the better technology than me. Now now I get to say I have everything. Now you have everything. You know, now he who all he, the consoles he, and sometimes multiple consoles. He um, or yeah. indeed she in this case, she who laughs last laughs longest. All right, so avid gamer gamer nerd from a young age at what point though does that start becoming uh, a career at what point do you start to think i hey, you know what i love games so much i feel like i want to do it for a living yeah i well i kind of fell into it i wasn't i wasn't sure what i was going to do i dabbled in music for about i don't know like two semesters in college and then i was not sure i was going to be able to succeed at the college level for music just because you know ear training theory is really difficult so then i switched majors and i went to music uh sorry to uh, film school to study media communications and then filmmaking um but i always played gaming like i always played games as a hobby i always made that a part of like just my life when i'm not in school when i wasn't doing you know, side jobs to make money for rent. And uh, it was always a part of my life, but I never really thought it was gonna be a job until I got this opportunity where I was asked to come in for an audition to be a, a host of a gaming podcast that was for a gaming develop developer in Montreal. I was the only person that they had brought in that day that was very knowledgeable about games. So I got the gig and that was pretty much where I started to explore like other businesses, other companies that I could potentially work for in games. And IGN was like pie in the sky and uh, I was just lucky to get recruited by them. It's kind of a crazy story, but yeah, it's interesting. That's you what happened. It's interesting you mentioned, yeah. I forgot, yeah, 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 of course you're uh, Canadian. Recently, uh, yeah. Canadian American, congratulations on your recent uh, dual citizenship, becoming an American citizen, just like I did some years ago. Yes, uh, indeed, let's, uh, let's, I think that, I think that's everyone that's for worth, a, worth a round of applause. <laughs> like everyone. Yeah, I'm American everyone's now. excited. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and Canadian as well though, right? Because you get just like oh, I get yeah. to keep my British citizenship, you get to keep your Canadian citizenship. That is correct, yeah. So it's all very great. Um I, I wanted to become an American just because I've lived here so long and finally was able to apply, so now I get to vote and do all that cool stuff that you guys get to do. As a Canadian, I can tell you it's a great time to be American. Great time. I, I was gonna, I, and I was gonna say so. This show has a very kind of maple syrup kind of flavor to it right now because uh, Adam, our band leader, and also a very uh, successful uh, game developer, uh, 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 the um, the developer creator of such hits as uh, Ding Dong XL, Bit Blaster XL, and the new and the new um, version of Atari's Missile Command. Uh, which is uh, very, very cool, uh, is from Toronto. That's cool. Well, that's nice to meet a fellow Canadian. So this has got a, a, a Canadian, a very Canadian vibe to it. I like it. I yeah. like it. It's an international Good. production right off the bat. So, so, <laughs> so you mentioned, so how did you get your job at IGN? So uh, actually, it's uh, kind of a funny story. I was we're still working at Gameloft. I was still a host for them, and I was starting to explore where to go. You know, I, where what path to take. Was I going to continue in games? Was I going to start acting? You know, I was even looking at maybe moving to Toronto or New York to pursue acting a bit more seriously. And uh, it just happened to kind of fall in my lap where, and I even thought it was a joke at first, but one of the producers of The Daily Fix reached out to me and was like, hey, we're looking for a new host. And I hadn't even heard that Jess had left The Daily Fix production, that they were looking for a host. So I was, I was like kind of in shock and in, in disbelief because at first I, I hadn't told anybody really that I was looking at p potentially going and exploring companies like IGN to work for them. And so, I responded kind of trepidatiously, but it definitely turned out to be legit. And they had reached out to me over Facebook, which was the initial scare. I was like, hold up, who's this? Trying to get, you know, easy access. Uh, but it turned out to be legit. Um, reach out, and then I went through the whole audition process, went to San Francisco, my first time flying to, actually, yeah, my first time flying to America. Uh, got to hang out for a night and a day in San Francisco and meet everybody at the company. And um, it was just a great fit. And then next thing you know, I was the host of the Daily Fix. It occurs to me that I haven't taken a, a, a photograph of this set yet. And you I really to should. Do that. I'm doing that. I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to get some Let good angles. Hold on. Too. I'm going to yeah, get some, get some, uh, get some pictures. I'm going to, I'm going to grab some right now so that I can post these to Twitter later. Uh, let's I love see. That. 
<laughs> All right, press get one over here. To make everyone look at the camera there, if you want. Oh, that's right. If you press the R button, everyone looks at the camera. That's really sweet. There we go. There we go. All right. Aww. Very good. Very good. Uh, all right. So, are there any other? I should get my monologue. Uh, angle as well see if i go all the way up here it's kind of like you're up in the actually like in the studio audience like up on the balcony but then if i come down here it's kind of like um... why are you sleeping nick <laughs> oh. nick come on you had one job stay stay a fucking stay awake at the fucking drums that's all you gotta do god damn it <laughs> cool i got my photo stay awake nick adam nick whatever i'm, I'm fully awake don't you worry um, <laughs> I got a photo. The audience, the audience, the audience is not happy. Uh, all right, so I think we got. Let me. Is there another angle I want to get? Uh, this. I had this idea like two o'clock yesterday afternoon, and I have a pilot episode on the air nine a.m. the following morning. So, uh, you know, fuck you. Basically, this is what you get. Like a, for a, for a very quickly thrown <laughs> thrown together um, talk show. I'm I'm channeling a lot of classic talk shows here. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously the, obviously, the Tonight Show, um, uh, you know, The Late Show, uh, The Larry Sanders Show. The reason why I have all the plants in the back is The Larry Sanders Show. Um, the plants are always very important to the set. And, of course, Between Two Ferns. And we are, indeed, right now, as we speak, uh, Between Two Ferns. And I'm very excited about that as well. And, again, down the road... Uh, we are going to be going to the. As you see, this is the. This is the. This is Animal Crossing. Animal talking after dark, and this is the mm -hmm. vibe we're going to be having when I have late night guests uh, on the show for something a little more intimate, maybe a little more adult. Uh, you know, a little, little less PG. Uh, I mean, I just told Adam to go fuck himself. So I don't have PG this show even, even is to begin with. But uh, you know, we're getting there. Now, I. <laughs> Naomi, was IGN a big deal when you first interviewed there, or was it still oh, yeah. kind of building its reputation? No, it was a big deal. Uh, at that point, Jess had been there. Jessica Chobot, uh, as you guys know, used to be the host of Vic The Fix before me, and she was there for like seven years, around the same time that I was at IGN. Um, so, so you she came, in, you came in as her replacement. I came as yeah, as her official replacement. She had they had been playing around with uh, different hosts. They'd been testing some a couple other hosts and landed on me. So yeah, it was it was they were basically on the hunt to find a new like tentpole like, face of the company basically. And, um, yeah, it was a big deal. Uh, IGN was still, I believe, under Fox at the time. Uh, you know, it's it's evolved and changed and grown a lot since then. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a huge deal. And especially for me to be moving to California, of all places, that was... I wasn't even thinking that far ahead. I was like, yeah, it'd be great to live there at, you know, at the end of this. But I didn't think that would be my first step, you know? <laughs> Now that so that wasn't your th that wasn't your first time in front of a camera doing that kind of work, no. but was it the it was the first time you were doing it at like a really big outlet? Right. Is that right? Okay. Yes, and my first salary job because if you think Game Loft that gig that gig was you know it was a gig it was a, a I'd go in for three days out of the month if any yeah it was like three days out of the month and we would shoot you know content for this one podcast show that they had once a month so it was it was a you know it paid well but it was definitely not a full-time job it wasn't something i could live off of so this was my first salary career job you know it, it, it was my step into what i was going to be doing for a very long time you did know? it feel, so did that feel like your big break moment at that point it did okay yeah, it really did okay. yeah because i mean they paid for my move down there i i was all excited i was like i'm gonna live in a you know super high skyscraper i'm gonna have the penthouse apartment you know making money now this is a salary job turns out of course san francisco is super expensive so i didn't get to live that that whole you know extravagant life but it was definitely um you know, having the salary and having, you know, the whole shebang taken care of, like my visa and making sure that I was housed and that I had, um, you know, a good support system when I moved there all by myself. Uh, it was a big deal. Yeah. Right. And right. look at you now. You're on animal talking. I know. <laughs> It's all, it's all, it's all come to fruition. I'm at the peak of my career right now. <laughs> and so, and, and your main job there was as the host of the Daily News Show, right? The Daily Fix? Correct. Okay, so you Daily kind of delivered, 
the game yeah. the, the day the day's daily gaming news headlines basically that's right yeah okay. i worked on that show every day for the past seven years and then i uh, of course would be pulled into other stuff like they had their start uh, their youtube start initiative which was a bunch of like other kind of content like they uh, they created a show for me called uh, cheap cool crazy which mike drucker our friend was on he oh good old drucker yeah show. oh i gotta have yeah. drucker on the show he would be great 100%, for this 100 percent. i was gonna say you should definitely have him on you know drucker um, could actually come on and do like a five minute comedy routine that that's a great amazing. idea. Have they can come over to the mon- they can go over to the monologue Mike and do a 5 yes. minute he can do he can do his type 5. He can do his his stand up routine. That would be incredible. Yeah, all for that. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> I got to like, you know, we we just hit on a brilliant idea um to have, you know, obviously, you know, when you think about all the things that talk shows do, you obviously have guest interviews, you have a monologue, you have mm-hmm. uh, you know, a musical uh gar- a musical guest but you know, you also have standups who come out and do like a few minutes of standup. So that we should add that to the to the show. We should. I'm going to talk to Drucker, and I'm going to talk to some to some other stand-up comedians. Oh, and of course, and yes, very handsome Billy, uh, 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 the dapper rapper. We have so many friends from the musical Raquel Lilly. We have so many friends from the world of uh, the musical world of Twitch. Uh, who can come in and uh, and do musical things for us? I think this is the beginning of, of of big things. Okay, so IGN Daily Fix. How long were you there? Yeah, I was there probably seven years. So I, I was there from 2011. My first day on the job, believe it or not, was E3, the live show. <laughs> so that was like my official start to the working for them, and uh, did that from June 2011 to um, I think it was October 2017. So yeah, almost I guess six and a half years. Yeah. And then what? And then what? What? What led you to finally leave IGN? Because that's a pretty cushy job. You must have a good reason to go do something else. Did you just get bored? Uh, I wasn't bored. I was. I was definitely looking at what was next because uh, I'd been there a long time. I felt like I'd done so much and done done it all in terms of what I could do there. So I was looking for, you know, and I had, of course, these aspirations of going to Los Angeles. I was still auditioning while I was working there, like sending video auditions. I was still working on other side projects all the time. And then there's, there were some opportunities, of course, that um, would have to require, like I couldn't do while still working at IGN. So I kind of had to make a decision um, also, it just happened to happen where my fiance was moving down to uh, Los Angeles anyway because he got a job down there. Right. Um, so it all kind of like it kind of forced me to decide, OK, am I doing this now? Am I waiting? What's going on? So I, I made the decision to move down. And so far, it's been awesome because I've never had this much freedom. I've never had this much involvement in really big projects that I'm super passionate about and would love to see realized and that I, I really could not have done if I had been at IGN um, just because of, you know, where it is. It's in San Francisco and uh, the nature of the work that I had to do there. I was very time consuming. So now I just have the freedom and um, to pursue my other goals and my other other dreams that I have for myself. I just realized while you were giving that answer, I accidentally pressed uh, uh, the trigger on my on my controller when I was looking at my phone the whole time that you were um, <laughs> that you were giving the answer. It's very rude of me. Sorry, sorry. How I apologize. Dare you, Gary. I apologize okay. to the audience and to everybody. <laughs> Look, listen to That's me. Okay. This is a pilot. <laughs> this is a pilot episode. Right. This is where we work the bugs. This is where we work the bugs out of the system. And so your patience, your patience um, is appreciated. Okay. So um, so down in LA, and I'm presuming moving down to LA was a part of like, you know, maybe uh, opening the door to like, you know, other yeah. aspirations as a host and an actress and things like that. A hundred percent. That's exactly, yeah. That that was the, that was the, the goal. And I'm thinking, you know, more down the road, like I've, because I moved down and everything, I had to start my own business. I had to start, you know, hiring people to help me with my own content. Because with IGN, I had everything at my disposal. I had li- unlimited resources. I had people who could help me create the content I wanted to do. Now I have to do it all myself. So it's just been a, a huge kind of freeing, fulfilling thing where I'm doing this all by myself and also pursuing all these other dreams of um, creating different types of uh, piece of content, you know, getting more into directing, getting more into writing, all that sort of thing. So without without letting uh, any kind of cats out of the bag, this might be a good time to tease that Naomi and I are actually working on a secret project that we can't tell we you are. anything about, but we are working yes. on a secret project together. And uh, the hope is that um, that is something you'll be able to uh, hear more about very soon. But that's all I'm going to say because, you know, we have to be, we have to be very... Uh, very, very tight-lipped 
uh, yeah. about these secret projects. Otherwise, you know, what's the point in them being secret projects? Um, <laughs> exactly. So, so bring so bring us up to date. What are you What are you doing? Like, what what are your what are your current main gigs these days? Where can right. we find you? Well, uh, I of course have all my social channels like uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, right now, what I'm working on, I, I'm producer and host of the show called that I created called the Last Week in Gaming show. Um, it's kind of a play on Last Week Tonight, uh, but for games. And we basically have a first half hour where we and talk about gaming lines. news. Yes. We let you guys in on what's going on. We have a discussion portion, and then we have a guest, which you actually were a guest on. I've been a guest on uh, your show, and now you're returning the compliment exactly um so it was really uh this was like a, a passion project we had been doing this show from our two-bedroom apartment not too long ago luckily caffeine was like hey let's put some money behind this and make this look really cool um now you're gonna probably see a i think you're leading towards the clip perhaps i believe um, so i believe you have brought a clip to show I did, yeah I sure so did. let's uh let's do that let's do a classic talk show staple yeah uh, Naomi has brought a clip so you can check out what she, uh, you know, what she does uh, every right. day. Uh, this is a clip from her uh, um, her weekly show, Last Week yes. in Gaming, which is a roundup of the week's uh, gaming news. Let's, That's right. Uh, and just to intro it a little bit, yeah, it's go ahead. basically going to be, uh, I think about it as a... Uh, you know, we're doing it from home again now because of coronavirus, because of all that stuff. So it's not going to be uh, at the studio level that we had it prior to this. But, it, you know, it's what we're doing from home. I mean, it look. It happens to be a story where we talk about Animal Crossing. Jimmy, so. Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Fallon, Stephen right. Colbert, they're all doing it from their basements right now. This is the new That's thing, true. right? The lo-fi, duct tape it together. Everyone's just That's making true. the making, making <laughs> do. So let's uh, let's roll a quick Take clip. Take a look. I, I believe you're actually talking about some of the latest developments in Animal Crossing in this clip. That's right. Animal Crossing New Horizons? Yes. Would you confirm? Yeah. Yay, nay? <laughs> 100%. And uh, Nintendo Thursday. Hold on, hold on. I'm screwed up. There we go. Leaf and Red. Leaf Hole. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, look, this is a pilot episode and there's a lot of fucking <laughs> shit going on. Yes, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Let's try that again. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Naomi, I believe, I believe, and I believe, Naomi, you brought a clip with you. Should we, should yeah, we, I did. should we, should we roll the clip? Let's roll it. Let's, yeah, let's, let's roll, roll it. it. Let's roll it. Yes. Would you confirm? Yes. Yay, nay? 100%. And uh, Nintendo's delivering a welcome update this Thursday that includes two old friends, Leaf and Red. Leaf heads up a delightful little garden shop while Red captains a creep, creepy boat, supposedly full of treasure. Uh, so buyer beware on that one. The update will also expand the museum with an art gallery and brings new events to the game, like nature day and wedding season. So somehow <laughs> Adam Crossing gets even more adorable. I do want to- that, That's fantastic. Now, where, now, and where can people find that, that content? Uh, right, so everything happens live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. on caffeine.tv slash Naomi Kyle. So you have to mark your calendars. It's 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we air every Tuesday. We have a new guest every week. And we're going to be... Uh, so then once the video airs, we... Uh, goes live rather we have to then post it to my youtube channel this is only because caffeine uh, doesn't have a vod system so we basically put it on my youtube channel as a place for the show to live post live show right. so uh so that's where you can catch up on all the episodes is, is primarily on my youtube channel which is youtube.com slash naomi kyle and you do also stream on twitch from time to time isn't that right I do. Yeah, I've been picking up streaming a little bit more. I've been really busy these past two weeks, so I haven't really had a chance to do it a lot. But um, I do stream uh, quite often. And when I do, I do a lot of just chatting or I play a lot of the most recent games. Like the last one I streamed was Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is awesome. And yeah, that was basically it. I'm also going, I'm going to surprise you. Oh. I'm, I'm going to show a clip that you didn't know I was going to show. Um, <gasps> I need to see this. But I thought this was actually pretty cool. I'm gonna. So Naomi was actually the host uh, for the first season of Star Trek Discovery's um, uh, behind the scenes show called right. uh, The Ready Room, and she got That's to interview right. all of the all of the actors from Star Trek. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you, and I'm gonna roll that little clip um, as well. Thank you. A lot better Love than it. New York, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah. And thank you again for, for coming on to our show today. So I just want to get right into the deep questions here for episode 12 because it was a big one for your character. 
Maybe the. Oh, ah, ah, buttons, buttons. Okay, we're getting, uh, I, look, all the, tr trust me, we're working out the glitches. Thanks, Adam. We're working out the glitches. We're working out the bugs. This is the pilot episode. I'm, I've got to reconfigure my whole stream deck to get these these buttons set up uh, the way I want them. But that was a pretty cool gig, right? Star Trek, and you got, like, you're interviewing the, 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 the uh, Captain Pike there. That was really cool. That was, that was very cool. I uh, w am really into Star Trek in general, and this new show is really awesome, Star Trek Discovery. Uh, I got to work on the season two for, uh, for the Ready Room chats, and yeah, it was really, it was a really nice experience. Um, you know, thanks to my friend uh, Chris Carl, who used to work at IGN, uh, for the hookup on that. And I also uh, was able to kind of be the first person to host uh, the Ready Room as it is now. And uh, as you guys probably know, or may not know, depending on if you're Star Trek fans, um, but it's very cool that, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. I just spoke about him yesterday. Hit the new host. Oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. Why am I blanking on his name? You guys all know, probably. I, I have no idea. Who is okay, it? Well, now I, now I, I need to know. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna get the name in a second here. She's Hold not on. googling it at all. I'm totally googling it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> is it Will? Is it Will Wheaton that's Will doing Wheaton. it now? Will? Will how can you forget the name of Will Wheaton? I don't a living know. legend. Lund Please forgive that, but yes, it's very cool to uh, to pass the torch to. I gotta get like better that. at my reactions. Like when you didn't get the <laughs> like like how can you not? Like let's do that again. Like, yeah. we're, I'm getting these on the second time around. And then um, I can be like. I don't know. <laughs> I just so Lundergrass came up with a good idea. Share we should share that we should share the link. So I just posted the link in the chat for you youtube.com slash Naomi Kyle. So if people want to go you. toss you a sub or whatever, they can they can check out your uh, your content. Um, Thank you so much. So let's talk about Animal Crossing a little bit. You know, you were just talking about the latest developments in Animal Crossing. You've you've been playing. How are you liking the game so far? Uh, I love it. I I play it. Pretty much it's like my morning routine now. Every time I wake up, I go downstairs, get a coffee, uh, sit on the couch and play Animal Crossing for like a couple hours. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun doing that. I uh, I play a lot with friends. I, I'm on a Discord channel now, so I can make sure every week when I'm ready to buy turnips and then sell them, I can get the best price. Um, so I've been doing all sorts of stuff like that. It's It's been a huge part of my day to day just in quarantine. <laughs> and what and what what is your priority? Do you want to have a beautiful island, a beautiful home? Do you want to make friends with the nicest villagers? Like how, what's your what's it's the great thing about Animal Crossing, right? It's not a game that you win or right. beat. You can just Do basically whatever make whatever kind of life you want. Like what 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 are your priorities in this virtual life that you're that you're living? Yeah, I think by like you said, having a perfect island, getting to that level 5 star rating, and I want to yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do after that. Actually, once my island looks nice, I'm gonna be with. Uh, I'm gonna be kind of stumped on what to do. <laughs> I don't um, really know. I have a question. Yeah. Do you know how to get rid of this stupid gorilla that lives in my town that I keep hitting with a net all the time? You we talked about gorilla. Just, don't, just don't. If you just don't talk to him for a really long time, eventually he will get bored and and, and talk about wanting to leave. And then say, yeah, yeah. And then tell him, yeah, fuck off. Hitting him with the net's not gonna do anything. You need to be more I've passive never aggressive heard than that. Of, uh, a gorilla. Have you guys encountered the ghost yet? Yes. Oh, I've seen the ghost. Yes, and yeah. I've actually got around and collected all the sprites, but like but the prize for doing it is not that great. It's not good. I know. You're supposed to always go for something new cuz it's usually going to add something that you haven't encountered yet in your inventory. Right. But it might not be something valuable. Cuz apparently the ghost doesn't really know what like it doesn't know the difference between valuable and not valuable. Um and so he just gives you what he thinks is of value. <laughs> so Leah in the chat just gave Adam a tip. Complain to Isabel about him. Don't talk to him. Go in his house and leave without saying anything and write mean letters. That just sounds like a campaign of like absolute <laughs> brutal, <laughs> passive, aggressive uh, torture. That's horrible. Yeah, this is coming from the person who has a graveyard for all her dead guests. That's right. Any left. <laughs> anytime, anytime one of Leah's uh, guests leaves, she builds a tombstone. Uh, and is actually a great has, has a graveyard of all her former villagers. But uh, but I mean, but she but she doesn't like in day engage in psychological torture to force them to leave. Uh, a couple of uh, getting some live. This is like a live focus group. We're getting some live feedback from the chat now. What's good asks the question: Why does Gary's Avi uh, have hair? Well, um, you know, in 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 Animal Crossing, you don't live the life that you live in the real world. You live the life that you want to have. And I want to, I, I want to have fantastic hair. That's not going to happen in the real world. I'm going bald. And in the and in the real world, I can have in in Animal Crossing, I can have this fantastic hair. Let's go 360 view of the hair here. 
<laughs> and, and also, it's something that came up in network notes. I try, I tried doing the show bald, uh, but the network executives didn't like it. They wanted a friendlier look, and so they gave me this. Uh, they brought in a professional um, hairstylist uh, to give me what we thought. This, 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 this was the hairstyle uh, that um, that was most popular with the key demographics in our in our focus groups. So, what, what was that? <laughs> What was that? That was a weird expression. I don't even a, know what the hell that was. It was a cold chill. I thought my hair gave you a chill. I'm trying out all my different expressions too. What, what, so one of the things I did in preparation for the show is I went into all my expressions and I put the ones that I thought would be most appropriate for the show on the on the little oh, wheel so that I would have very it. Very smart. Let's, 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 let's check out some of my expressions. Let's see what I've got. I've got joy, delight, Greetings, surprise, shocked, encouraging, pleased, and disagreement. I hope I, I hope I hope I don't have to uh, use um, disagreement. <laughs> uh, Toby Blue two seventy seven in the chat asks, maybe we could have an audience question section. Well, you know what? Why don't Why don't we implement that on the show right now? We're making this shit up as we go. If you have a question for celebrity. Uh, streamer and internet personality and uh, pro gamer Naomi Kyle. Hey, no, while while we get some uh, questions from the chat, yeah. I also wanted to ask you about Overwatch League. This is kind of interesting, right? Didn't you become like a part owner in a professional esports team recently? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Toronto Defiant uh, is an esports team. Thank you for the applause. Uh, yeah, I, we've been working together actually just uh, even during all of this where there are no actual games. Like I was supposed to attend a lot of the games that were happening in Toronto this year, but uh, those all got pushed, postponed. So yeah, we've just been working together. And, um, you know, I thought besides just being a real big supporter of Toronto and esports teams in general in Canada because I feel like that's it's the first time we've seen a real uh, Canadian esports team in the big leagues that has been gotten this much attention. So I'm very excited to be uh, representing a Canadian team like Toronto Defiant. Which now is what? Now cool. what? That being a uh, that that um, participation that you have with the team. What does that actually mean? Do you uh, do you give team talks? Do you like? Are you involved in team business? Like, what's what's your actual involvement? My involvement currently is we're working on content and we're working on uh, appearances uh, for the events. Hopefully, once the events start happening, I can you know be out there saying, "Hey, I'm here at the show. Like, come see me." Um, but we're right now just focusing on uh, making sure people are aware of what's going on with. Uh, OWL in general. So like, you know, every time there's a game that Toronto defines playing, I'm letting people know about it. That sort of thing. So uh, now we're starting to get some questions from the chat. Rogue yeah. Anna Z asks the question, uh, who are your favorite female characters and why? And I, I presume she's talking about in video games, but that I guess you, yeah. you could broaden it, but like, let's like, stick to games. Who are your favorite female characters in video games and why? I'm well, I'm a huge fan of Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. I think that she is just very cool. It's, it's she's an, a whole new uh, female character that's been introduced to gaming that was a huge success all on its own, uh, voiced by one of my favorite actresses, Ashley Birch. Um, so I think really that her whole like she just broke into the scene and I was like, who's this new like kind of Tomb Raider esque, but in a whole other world that we've never experienced? Like it's post apocalyptic and but you know at this point there's robot dinosaurs and everyone's kind of back to uh, living off the land and it's uh, it's a very fascinating story and then of course i think aloy just herself uh, her story is very interesting throughout the whole game and right. i'm looking forward to them making a second one uh so i think her um you know i gotta give a shout out to tomb raider of course she was our first female led uh video game character that anyone really experienced from back in the day um very strong female character there yeah oh, and, no i don't know if you're hearing that but the audience is going wild right now a lot of a really? lot of a lot of fans out there oh yeah Aww. absolutely Awesome. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm really happy that uh, yeah, I definitely had to get a word in for Lara. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, do you feel like do, do you feel like Lara Croft kind of opened the door for more female heroes in video games to follow? Because she was the 100%. first really, really big one, right? Yeah, she was the first uh, video game character uh, female protagonist. So, you know, most games have been up until that point have been led by male characters. So it's it's it was like definitely uh, opening the door for that. I think, you know, there was this uh, sexualization of her that I think made it still appealing to guys and that, you know, that's the route they had to take at the time. But I feel like now it's opened the gates where people can have we can have a multitude of different types of female characters. They don't have to be 
this attractive, you know, idealistic person. I feel like it's uh, it's evolved a lot since then, thankfully. Yeah, absolutely. And Leela is a perfect example of that. You know, she's not sexualized at any point throughout the game. So yeah, uh, Leah's a big fan of Horizon Zero Dawn and Aloy as well. Great and game. I, I guess the latest news is that I mean, I guess, I, we already kind of knew there was going to be a sequel because right. uh, the game was a big hit. It's inevitable. But it sounds like now, I guess the latest news is there might be a whole trilogy, uh, yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn. Zero, Zero Dawn. Was, Which was I that, think fits. Was, I think that works. So you, so like you cover the news. Is that actually something they announced, or is that just a rumor that's going? I think around? it's just a rumor at this point. Okay. All right. I mean, but who would who would be surprised if that turned out to be the case, though? You know? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I I think there's definitely talks of at least a sequel. I don't know about trilogy, but definitely I've heard rumblings. Miss Envy yeah, asks at this point nothing's official. Miss Envy <laughs> asks the question: uh, What game have you spent the most hours playing? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, probably Crash Bandicoot, the first one. I played so much of that game back in the day when I was a kid. Played. I played on repeat uh, the Phantom Menace, Star Wars Phantom Menace games, which weren't reviewed highly. Like I went back and looked at what IGN scored it back in the day. Not a highly reviewed game, but for me, it was I was really into Star Wars when they the new um, uh, trilogy had come out, and I for one had really uh, a huge love for Princess Leia. So uh, I was like happy to have a fi finally a new female protagonist that I could get in on board with uh, on Star Wars with uh, Padme. Uh, not Padme, sorry, uh, Queen Amidala. So I feel like that game, just I just really grabbed onto it and played it over and over and over again. I can't tell you exactly how many hours because that's not something that was trackable back then. Right. But I know for a fact that that was a game I just kept going back to play a lot. It's a good a thing lot. it wasn't trackable. I know, right? <laughs> um, so I'm thinking that's probably my highest. Uh, I don't know. At this point, it's definitely changed. I, I'm guessing Animal Crossing is up there for me. Uh, I'd have to check my hours. I'm probably like 160 hours at this point in Animal Crossing. Um, I'm just trying to go through the list. I played a lot of games where I started them and had to drop them because new games came out. And that was a lot of my job at IGN was like playing the newest game every time. Right. So like, I had a hard time like grabbing onto games and like really stay. But, it, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn was one of those games that I completed to like I played to completion. So are you a are you a are you a, are one. you a trophy hunter? Are you an achievement hunter? Do you care about that kind of stuff? I was at a certain point, but then I don't know. Somewhere along the line, I start I stopped caring. <laughs> uh, next question. Um, yeah. London. Uh, let's see. Uh, Toby Blue two seventy seven asks, "Who's your favorite Animal Crossing villager?" I have this villager who I've just found out is I guess a rabbit, but doesn't really look like a rabbit to me, but he does have the ears like a rabbit. Um, and his name is Snake and he's a ninja, but he's very uh, into getting swole and getting ripped. And I just find him hilarious every time I talk to him. Uh, so he's my favorite at the moment. But there's a bunch of other cute ones around uh, that I just haven't been able to really get to know as much. But his name's Snake, which is funny. Oh, he's that's a funny. And his name's Snake. Adam. Um, Adam just yeah. corrected me off stream, by the way. He's actually not from Toronto. He's from the uh, Vancouver area. So I got that one wrong again. I oh. apologize. I apologize oh, to good. the audience for getting that one wrong. Since I know that Canada is very small. I know that I know <laughs> that I know that Canada uh, Canadians are very very touchy uh, about their uh, about their Canadianness, and you got to you got to get it right. You got to get it right. Very proud. So I'm glad I'm glad to yeah. issue that correction on air. Let me see. What's the next question from the from the chat? Lundergrass asks, "Who's your favorite Overwatch character?" Uh, Mercy. I actually cosplayed as her. Mercy uh, was my go-to. She's a healer. She's I I'm not particularly amazing at playing Overwatch, but I was really good playing Mercy. So I'd um, say she's my favorite. And that actually leads us into our next question, also from Lundergrass. Have you tried cosplay? And I know for a fact oh, that you actually yeah. do a ton of cosplay, right? I've actually done a lot more cosplay than I thought. I don't consider myself a cosplayer, but I have actually done quite a bit. Like, I uh, have even made two of my own cosplay uh, costumes, which I did a black cat one that I put together entirely myself. I also did a Harley Quinn bombshell cosplay just recently. I'm actually year. I'm actually switching over to my uh, browser view right now. Yeah, let's see. I just just typed in Naomi Carl cosplay and let's see. I'm There's seeing a lot. I'm seeing Captain yeah, Marvel. Supergirl. I'm seeing Aloy, Harley Quinn, Black Cat, Lara Croft. Here's yeah, Mercy that you just talked about. Uh, Even yep, Sailor you, Moon there. <laughs> you've done you yeah you've done a ton of these. Yeah. You've done a ton it's of. Them me because I never consider myself as a cosplayer and sometimes these kind of come together last minute but I guess yeah I've done 
quite a few characters myself. Now, Very do you cool. do all of the costume design and putting everything together yourself, or does someone help Sometimes. you with that? Okay. Yeah, some of them. Uh, the Mercy cosplay was the only one I actually had commissioned. Like, because I, I mean, that looks really that looks really involved. Oh my god, yeah, and the art that's my favorite cosplay that I've done just because of the level of you know, like the wing. Like, how do those wings even work? That looks insane. Uh, they were basic. They were like a, a backpack. You know, you'd put them on, st strap them on, and they would have these like PCP like tubes that basically put you know made the shape of the wings and then everything else was uh what do you call it uh special type of foam that they use in cosplay i forget what's called but yeah it was just and uh, i think the plastic uh the see-through plastic was the only thing that you know i don't know how they did it like it it, they, it was a costume maker in i think china who made it um so i had to have it perfect like measured perfectly and was, i'm looking uh, at it i'm looking overseas. at it right now it's insane yeah. Yeah, it's, it was very detailed. Like, one of my favorite cosplays because of that. Let's see mm -hmm. if I can get a better image over here. Let's see if I go... Yeah, and it's on. my most true-to-the-character cosplay that I've ever done. Like, some of the other characters I've done... It's yeah. super, super impressive. Was that easy to yeah. move, easy to move around in? Because I know they're often not. Uh, it was difficult, and also uh, parts parts of it ripped while I was doing the photo shoot because I wanted to move a bit more flexibly. But I, I guess the suit wasn't as uh, sturdy in some parts. But uh, you know, everything else kind of stayed together there. And as you can see, the bodysuits actually, uh, the everything was very true to the character um, on that one. And then the one I made myself that was very true to the character was the Harley Quinn bombshell cosplay, which I felt like I pretty much nailed every aspect of that cosplay but that was one i put together myself and, and they're often those those really elaborate costumes are often really fragile one of the things that i've seen yeah. pop up now at, at conventions uh -huh. is either like an area or people that go around with like duct tape and things and they'll like help you fix up your costume if it gets broken yep yep that's a real thing it's yeah they'll have everything now. tape paint all sorts of things uh thank you very much donkey suit for the uh for the twitch prime sub to the, the uh, LOG. Google image search on a live stream was making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I close look. I, I close all my inappropriate tabs before I start live streaming. Don't worry about that. I'm a professional. Uh, another another good. <laughs> <laughs> the drum, the drum kit is killing me. That's one thing is worth its weight in gold. I'm so glad. I think it was Leah. Leah Le Le acquired that for me at the last minute, and thank you so much, Leah. Uh, Leah is our executive producer. Uh, she is the uh, she is the arty um, to my Larry to my Larry Sanders, and without her, I don't know what I would do in Aww. life, in life, or in or in or in Animal Crossing. Um, shout out to Leah. Shout out to Leah. Uh, let's give her let's give her a round of applause. Yes. Yeah. Hold on. I feel like I feel like that's I feel like this is worthy of a reaction. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um. Oh, sorry. Where are you going? <laughs> you, we're not done with you yet. We're not done with you yet. Um. There is. I, I, have, I have at least one more question from the chat. Um. This is a good one. Uh. Toby asks, as someone who has a strong work ethic, how are you coping with the world coming to a standstill? I love that question. Um. Uh, that is a. I think I've been trying to figure out actually i feel like this has been a welcome break for me like meaning i i'm glad that i'm not driving around everywhere i don't have a million and one meetings uh, i'm doing it all from the comfort of my home uh you know i don't know i feel like this is an opportunity for me to just take a break um because one of the things you run into when you are a workaholic or you overwork and do everything you can and and every moment of every day I you know you find yourself um, kind of burnt out you find yourself kind of forgetting to take care of you you know all that that good stuff that people have been talking about a lot of these past few I guess month I guess it's probably been a couple months now uh, but I, I definitely felt feel like the slowdown was like kind of a relief you know it was something that I could kind of own and take on and really like have a moment where I can just be and not have to worry about work, you know, like kind of t take the, the pause button and really put a stop to any like constant ideating and coming up with what should I be doing next? And you know, that, that trap you fall into when you, you work a lot. Um, so I've actually been enjoying it. I've been taking my mornings. Like I said, I have, you know, my animal crossing kind of hour to two hour break every morning before getting started on stuff. And I've been spending a lot of time outside, you know, like I now I work a lot outside on my little patio and it's been really nice. Actually, the weather's been really nice lately. So just been kind of 
on mini vacation. You know, part of my life's on vacation. I still do some, like, a lot of work, uh, you know, streaming and doing stuff at home, but I try to balance it out a bit more. What do you, uh, uh, aside from the professional side of it, though, like, what about just being uh, cooped up? Like, what do you miss the most? Do you miss going to restaurants or go to the movies or just the mall or just being out with, like, what do you, what do you, what, like, what, when this is all over, um, what's the first thing that you would want to do? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, I feel like it's a two-part question. I think the first thing I would want to do is get a massage or a facial of some kind. So kind of get that ball rolling. (laughs) Um, So it's just some like R&R. And then I think after that, the thing that's really hit me actually harder than I, and I wouldn't have expected this to happen to me, but I was like looking through photos of my past, like 2019 and everything I did. And I was like, oh my God, do I miss conventions? Which I know oh, sounds yeah. crazy because usually I'm working at conventions, but I just miss the being around people, the kind of energy that conventions bring. Like, you know, that feeling, like especially I think you were at TwitchCon uh, this past year, that whole San Diego vibe, like Comic-Con, E3, there's just like something to it. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm really starting to miss just like running into people. Like I run into so many friends and people that I just don't see regularly enough at those conventions and I, I it just kind of hit me and I was like oh yeah I kind of miss that feeling of being at conventions but I know it's kind of crazy to say but it because it, it is work but um it just kind of hit me this past week um yeah. Adam what about you what how, how are you doing with being cooped up and, and what do you what do you miss the most how are you how are you holding uh, up you know what it's very interesting because I've been training at being cooped up my whole life. And uh, <laughs> so I feel like I should be writing a book on how people should be coping because I like to not go outside and not see people and not be around people. And uh, so this is working out pretty well for me. Yeah, there is an aspect of that being a gamer, right? We're all used to uh, just being indoors, playing games. Yeah. Kyle, oh, that Kyle, Kyle Naomi Kyle's fiance. Uh, stepping in with the big baller gifting five tier one subs in the channel risky life uh risky lifey 446 hold on i gotta gotta get my emotes here uh let me get my (laughs) i gotta do the the clapping um dr dunn and the main potato uh all recipients and okay big dre and okay big dre (laughs) is kyle is kyle watching the stream I, I, I mean, I guess I guess he is if he's if he's gifting so. gifting the subs. Welcome, yeah. welcome all of you to the LOG. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Welcome if you're watching. to the LOG. <laughs> aside aside from the weirdness of um, you being uh, some form of Kyle and him being another form of Kyle, like was that was that a weird thing that you uh, commented no. on when you first got together? Actually, Am I the only no. one to notice it? No, we def. I mean, we noticed it for sure. It just wasn't a big deal. Like, I didn't really, um, didn't I didn't mind having to say Kyle a bit more in my lifetime than I normally would. Um, <laughs> uh, so I think it, it's, uh, it was just kind of a c- cool coincidence. If it worked uh, out, if it worked out the other way though, where like he had to take your name when you get married, he would be Kyle Kyle. Gary, yes, I'm actually. I <laughs> we have heard this joke. So many times, but yeah, that is the funny. Look, joke no one, that no one, no, no one, no one promised <laughs> that the humor on this show would be original, Naomi. No one promised that the jokes would not be stale and warmed over. That's pretty much what you're going to get on this show. Uh, I love it. The con- the concept is original. The content is not. But thank you, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Kyle, uh, for the subs and not to be outbid, DJ Kento. Uh, who has now donated, a, a gifted a, a, a total of a 112 subs in this channel. My goodness. Holy has now cow. gifted five more to Nuria, Endless Darks, Lee Glynn, Too Familiar, and Blanket Fort 83. My, my goodness. Very cool. Welcome to the LOG. <laughs> DJ Kento says, still funnier than Jimmy Fallon. Thank you so much. I appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so listen, Naomi, I don't want to keep you uh, for, for too much longer, but but thank you so much for being a guest uh, on the show. Um, of course. What haven't we... Co- well, like, let me ask you this. What's a question that I haven't asked you, but something you would like to talk about? Or is there anything you want to plug or any, anything you want to... Anything you would... Uh, you, want to, you want to do or say before uh, we let you go? Uh, this this is your big moment. What's, you know, like I said, this is, the, this, is a, this is a moment in Twitch history 
how will how will you take this opportunity to leave your mark on it? You know, it is my first ever talk show. Like officially in the Hollywood space, this is my first talk show that I've Oh, ever done. wow, yeah. So, I need to thank you for breaking the uh, the wall in that or You're you know, a dis- you're a happen. disruptor. We're breaking all disruptors the, uh, right now. We're disrupting the system. We are disrupting. I'm so, yeah, and I hope that this leads to me being on many more talk shows in the future, and I get to say that you're the the one who opened the doors for me. So, oh my goodness, there's gonna there's so gonna much. be a there's gonna be a there's gonna be fifty copycat Animal Crossing talk shows on the internet in a couple Here's of in a couple of days. Though. But let like, the, uh, the, the original and the best. We are the Pathfinder. Yes. Uh, we are the Trailblazer. We are the trendsetter, the thought leader. You name it. Uh, you'll come back and join us on the show another time, right? A hundred percent. Anytime you need me, I'm ready to hop on Animal Crossing. I will be there. Origi- original Ed Fry says, I hope Naomi uh, does come back. She's a really great guest. So there you go. You oh, were a hit. Thanks. You were yeah. a hit. Well, I also have a permanent stay thanks to the uh, the equipment that I provided and the coffee mugs and the plants. And so, yeah. I'd say I left my mark, if anything. That's and true. If I don't come that's back, true. I'll still be happy. And uh, I, so- I wish you the best of success, too. I think you're going to have amazing guests on this. I think it'll be big. Everybody, everybody uh, helped put this together in double quick time. Price 412, thank you for providing the drum kit. I want to make sure that you get a shout out. Um, yeah. Uh, Adam uh, provided a lot of the lights. Uh, a, lo- a lot of the, st- I-, I think about half of the things that I needed to get this going, I already had. The other half I had to kind of procure very quickly. And uh, I think Incredible. the thing that... I think the thing that really made it pop is like the the backdrop, the wallpaper, the city wallpaper. Yeah. Leah, yeah. fortunately, by some that's not easy to get. Leah, uh, by some miracle, uh, had that in her uh, storage, and that's oh, what wow. really that's what really made this work. And again, I'm just going to give yeah, you so good. Yeah, it's <laughs> so really good. great. Just another quick look, another quick look at the set here. Um, you know, we've got our ferns. Uh, we've got all our we've got all our greenery. Uh, we've got the <laughs> you've got the musical area over here for Adam to really uh, shine. There you go and do his Incredible. thing, um, and the ca- and, and then over there in the far corner you can see the little monologue area. Uh, that's where I'm gonna eventually, eventually have uh, funny jokes in a monologue for you, and it's also where uh, stand-up comedians uh, will be coming uh, to um, uh, do to uh, yeah to come and do, to, to do their to do their bits as well. So I believe is- you have a parting gift for. I do, but I can't give it to her while because because of the, uh, because of Nintendo bullshit. Right. I cannot I cannot give it to her um, while she's um, Can while she's here. You see you see that you see that god awful raccoon statue behind you. You're giving me that uh, that awful thing. That's I'm what he kidding. does. He's given me like five of them. That's what he does. <laughs> That should that's, just be your go-to parting gift for all your guests. That's 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 yeah. Every every everyone Stop gets that. To the tanuki. That's yeah. like that's like the uh, the booby prize. <laughs> Naomi Kyle, uh, you're a great friend. You're a you're a wonderful person, and thank you so much for uh, being a guest uh, on the show. It was really great to have you here as part of this uh, really dumb experiment. Thank you, Gary. It truly was an honor, and um, I'm appreciative of everyone who tuned in to watch this today. You're uh, you're in for a real ride with this one. I think we're gonna become a oh, lot yeah. bigger. Oh yeah, it's, it's only gonna get. Well, it's, it, it may not ever oh, get yeah. better because you're such a great guest, but it'll certainly Aww. get bigger. Uh, I, I I really really be interested to see who is like the biggest celebrity we could get. Like, could we get Brie Larson to come on this show? Could we get Elijah Wood to come incredible. on the show? Who yeah. can we get? Who can we get? I can I can get I can get at the likes of Adam to show up anytime he's got nothing better to do <laughs> all right i'm gonna let i'm sure no it's a saturday morning i don't want to take up any more of uh, naomi's time i'm sure she's got lots to do uh naomi kyle thanks so much for joining us on the show everyone uh naomi kyle everyone thank you thanks guys <laughs> oh wait hold on i'm st- i'm still not emoting enough i should have there we go there you go there you go adam why don't you come over and join me on the couch how you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. What do you What do you think of the show so far? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this was This was put together. This was kit bashed together so quickly. Adam's wearing a hat and a shirt that I lent him at the last minute. Adam, tell it. Tell me. Tell me about where can people. So we mentioned earlier in the show that you are a game developer. You're pretty much a one man show. You make these little these dumb little games that um, that go on to have great uh, success. 
Um, mm-hmm. Where can people find your games? And like, if, if people had to play, if, you, if somebody said to me, justify your existence to me as a game developer, what one game uh, would you show them? Well, they, I'm going to have to say they got to play Ding Dong XL. It's Ding a good Dong one. Ding Dong XL is my favorite one button, incredibly easy to play arcade game, and uh, people really seem to enjoy it for whatever reason. And it's uh, allowed me to sit on my ass at home here and take part in this. Uh, has, experiment <laughs> so that uh, has that been your biggest success uh kind of commercially kind of it's uh been a a big success commercially but also uh because of the likes of jared petty and greg miller and uh the and me? at ign and me uh, yeah and and gary witta uh because we have a little uh gary witta easter egg that's in, right in, we do there's a space rocks game. easter egg in um in uh in ding dong xl which i love yeah and um, it's... uh ding dong got caught by the uh, chat filter and i had to let it through because i presume they mean uh, they think <laughs> you're talking about dongs um where can people get ding dong xl so it's on uh, it's on phones right it's on iphone and android phone and i believe it just came out on the switch as well right yeah it's on the switch it's on steam it's on android ios uh what do you think is the best version i would say the nintendo switch one is great uh, but also playing on the phone because most people like to play it while they're on the toilet because there's just enough time. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that depends on how much time you spend uh, on the toilet. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, you know what? You can play a couple rounds if you need to. Now, I am going to... I, I, I would probably need to play several. Um, I am going to... Uh, now, you didn't bring a clip, but fortunately, I've got you covered. I am going to show a clip. We're going to run the trailer for Ding Dong... Uh, XL on the Nintendo Switch, which this can't be right. Lee is telling me it's currently nine cents. That can't yes, be right. It's uh, how is it that cheap? Because see, Gary, I don't really care about how much it costs. I just want people to play my games. Wow, what a man of the people you are. Uh, let's go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna run the clip uh, right now. Let's uh, let's see if we can do this without fucking up this time. <laughs> Insane. That game is nine cents mm-hmm. on the eShop right now. Now, is that you? Now, do you set that price, or how does that work exactly? We can go in the back end and like propose discounts, and Nintendo approves them and whatnot. Um, and it probably makes no money at nine cents because it probably costs them that in bandwidth to sell it. Right. But I don't really care. I I think it's a fun game, and people seem to enjoy it. And uh, you know. That's that's how you find a following, I guess. Now, it's also available on Steam. Leah just posted the Steam link in the chat. Yeah, um, it's also on Steam. Very, I have a bunch of other stupid All reviews, very, very positive. It's 99 cents on Steam right now, on iOS and Android as well. That's that's amazing. It's a, it's a really it's one of those little games that's like super fun, but also super frustrating, but frustrating in the way that makes you want to keep playing it. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Hey, Joey Noel from Kind of Funny's in the chat. Let's say hello to hello, Joey. Thanks for joining us. Come on, Gary. Your emote point. There you go. DJ Kento, gifting her a tier one sub. Welcome, Joey, to the LOG. Welcome to the LOG. This is a little bit slow, but hold on. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and do a little something here. Let's Just talk we... your way through it. Hold on, hold on. Calm down, Gary. Don't freak out. I'm, I'm like, look, you have to understand, I'm not just the host. I'm also like the guy in the video booth. I'm the cameraman. I'm doing, I'm doing everything right now. I'm doing fucking everything. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Let's see. Can we make this work? We can. I'm going to get a little. I don't know how much you, I don't know if you're seeing this happening live on stream. Oh, yeah. But there you go. Uh, now we've got a new, now we have a new guest. And now people know who you are. Um, you can just change it to 
with guest Adam Nickerson. <laughs> no, you're a special guest. You're a special guest. Because uh, people always say, like, oh, who's Gary talking to or whatever? And, you know, the chat has to tell them this way. Um, it makes it uh, nice and easy. Um, uh, so, yeah. And then and I think the mods will be able to help it with that as well as, like, you know, Gary's guest is whatever. But I, but I like it actually having having it up on the screen uh, as a Chiron. I think that's I think that works uh, pretty cool as well. I'm going to do you the mercy of not putting up a headshot. Um <laughs> Now, the other thing that I wanted, because I never really got to talk to you about this, um, but uh, you also did a really cool uh, project recently where you um, reinvented, rebooted, recreated, whatever to call it, the, 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 the arcade classic Missile Command for, oh, um, yeah. for uh, uh, Atari. Um, it, how did that come about? Honestly, that specifically came about because of uh the kind of funny segment and jared petty absolutely gushing about uh ding dong xl right so uh a fan of jared's his name's jason he's a producer over at atari he uh reached out and said hey uh love ding dong xl uh would love to work with you let's see if there's something we can put together and uh just after a back and forth for a little while we somehow got a green light on making a game like mine that doesn't necessarily make you know a company tons of money but people enjoy playing it and uh so they somehow got the green light on that and there we go we got missile command recharged let's go to the clip oh you have a clip That is super cool. It's the weirdest thing seeing my logo beside the Atari, Atari logo there. Uh, and, and while, yeah, sure, Atari's changed dramatically since I was a kid. Right. Uh, I played the hell out of Missile Command. Was that was it intimidating? Uh, messing around with a with a classic game like that that everybody knows. Uh to a point, but I made it 100% clear at the very beginning of discussions with them that I have absolutely no idea what the hell I'm doing. Right. And so not to expect anything. And still somehow they gave me a contract. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. I mean, it, I, mean I, I, I got it. It looks great. I haven't tried it yet, but I, 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 having looked at that trailer, I feel like I got I to gotta pick it up. Yeah, it's just like my other ones, uh, you know, a straightforward just play survive as long as you can i tried to make it uh because the traditional one was a level based system i wanted it to be kind of the endless thing so you could just play it for a round in two three minutes and then uh move on with your life and uh, it's got power-ups and whatnot and and so it really falls in line with my other style of games and and i was absolutely thrilled that they let me make my type of game within my scope and it didn't have to have a bunch of free to play garbage i mean it uh, i mean it feels like a good fit though because if you like the kind of games that you have made it's it's not a million miles away from missile command right exactly the, all the ones i've made are actually inspired by their original games right so so it, it's a really interesting connection there that is super super cool and what platforms uh is that available on missile command's currently available on ios and android and uh there may be very shortly, uh, it may be out on other platforms. All but, right. Uh, well, I, I look forward. About that. I look forward to. Uh, I look forward to uh, to seeing it. Uh, Tom G one zero one three says this is incredible. How long has Gary been doing this talk show bit? Well, for about an hour and a half, uh, something like that. This is the pilot episode. Um, can't you tell with, by the quality? Yeah, can't you tell? <laughs> of all the, there's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of glitches in the system. But you know, given that this is something we threw together. In less than 24 hours, I'm actually really pleased with it, how it's uh, come out. Um, now, Adam, are you are you interested? Um, now, but just so we clear, this is not actually a job offer. I'm just asking you: uh, Are you interested in coming back uh, and uh, being uh, the, the band leader on uh, another episode of the show? Oh, a hundred percent. As long as people think my uh, 
drumming was on point, I I can return. Well, let's let, let's let's do it. What do you, what do you, let's ask the chat right now? What do what do people in the chat think of Adam uh, as our band leader? I'm, gonna, uh, I'm impressed, says C Canfield. Um, uh, ten out of ten, says Chermalerm. Oh, look at that. Are you doing you're doing pretty good. Yeah, he was great. I love it. Uh, guys, you were definitely on point with the drums. Like you, you were hit, you were hitting the right, you were hitting the right notes on the on the drums. Thirteen out of ten. Um, more Adam. I think Adam's a natural. He's great. Go Adam. Love it. It was banger. I did see a lot of people saying I needed to do or we needed more uh, badump chunk. But uh, now, to unfortunately, be fair, go ahead. Go ahead. I was I was actually waiting for you to make jokes before I did that. So. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Oh, the audience is not a fan of that. When you when you go against the host, when you go against the host, the audience is going to turn on you. Adam is the new Paul Schaefer, says Icaros. Well, I got to get fancier shirts if that's the case. Adam, what do you think? Like in your role as exec producer on the show, uh, how do you think the show can grow? What what are, what are some things that we can do uh, to 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 evolve the show beyond this very rough and ready pilot format that we've got right now? Well, I think a lot of the uh, chat. Had discussion has been great with the comedian like when you brought up mike drucker and you know doing a five minute set that that is just on point with the late night show um and then i i'm really looking forward to seeing you not on your phone or your switch not going into sleep mode oh god so the, the, the studio lights have gone down there you go look <laughs> <laughs> this, this this show, don't forget, this show is being broadcast out of my basement. This is Wayne's World. And you can see here, it's looking it's looking really, really good. We've got, I'm going to take a couple, oh shit. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. Oh my God. I don't, I don't want, <laughs> I'm still figuring out how to play this game. <laughs> uh, Lil Nas X and Guy Fieri both play. Now, you want to, you want to talk about Flavortown, Adam? <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about Flavortown? I think Guy should come on the show. I'm, I'm sure his avatar looks fucking sick. I'm sure it yeah, looks exactly like amazing. him. Lil Nas X could come on and do a musical performance. Guy could come on and do a cooking segment. Give us his recipes. I, I'm gonna get. I'm. I'm gonna be looking. Hold on a minute. Leah just posted something on Instagram. I'll show. Oh I'm, my goodness. Oh my god. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Are you seeing this? Yeah. The the um. Yeah. That is that is everything that I hoped it would be. Fieri Crossing. Nick Scarpino, of course, uh, kind of funny, uh, can come on and do some stand-up. We do actually have. Let me just step over here. You don't often get. You don't often see this part, but definitely we do have a whole. This is where I do my monologues. I notice I'm still in late night mode here. Let's go back to uh, the regulars. This is where I do my my opening monologue, but it's also going to be um, uh, where our stand-up comedian is going to come on and do their stand-up bits. Uh, try and then do a test joke. Um. Uh, let me think. Why, 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 Adam? Why did the biscuit cry? Why? Because her mother was away for so long. Oh. Boy. No? No? We, got, we have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck you. You come up and tell a joke. Oh, God. Get, get out of my fucking way. Okay, right. <laughs> Yeah, here's what, here's what I'm going to do. Hold on. Get, let, let, oh, my God. Move out. Here it goes. I, I, wait, 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 wait. Stay there. Stay there. I'm going like, to do this Johnny Carson style. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to what? Oh, no, I can't do it while you are. Can I angle this the right way? I can't do it. While I'm at the desk, I, my camera can't see you. So I'm going to come over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit on the couch while you do your stand up bit. All right, go. Okay. I know one joke. And uh, I heard it from Abby Russell on uh, at Giant Bomb. Did you hear about the uh, new type of bee they found that uh, produces milk? No, tell me about it. It's called a booby. <laughs> oh, come on, Gary. I don't. I don't even get that joke. <laughs> I don't even get it. A booby. I need a gong. I need a gong. A booby. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh god, jeez, that's terrible. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah. But like, it wasn't any worse than the wafer one. Uh, let me see if I let me let me. Okay, I got I got one for you, Adam. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? 
Uh, I don't know. Tell me. A, a carrot. <laughs> okay. No. Mm, no. I don't know how I feel about that. Do you want to get? You want to try another one? Okay. Uh, you said you only know one joke, so let's see what you got. Let's see. I'm gonna hide behind this fern in a very sinister way while you tell this joke. Why? Why? <laughs> why do cows? <laughs> oh, I'm great at this. Yeah. Why do cows not enjoy milk? I don't know. This is for my milk base set. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> Are all your because jokes they... about milk? Because they lactose. Oh my god! It got a laugh. <laughs> it got a laugh. All right, let's see if I can do one more. Let's see if I can do one more. Um, uh, I'm shilling for big milk right now. <laughs> you're shilling. I'm seriously shilling for big milk right now. Um, I don't know if I've got. I've got, let's see. Uh, let's see if I can think of. God, my joke. My jokes are so so bad. I u I usually have some really good uh, dad jokes. Um, <laughs> you know, I've actually Our got. Dad. I've actually got a lot of jokes. You know, you have a lot of jokes about milk. I have a lot of jokes about steak. Oh, and perfect. It's, and, it, and it's actually really hard to tell funny jokes about steak. But when you do, they're hilarious. In fact, you could say it's a rare medium well done. <laughs> no? No? Your, the chat says the chat says you pushed your call to 11:30 for this. I'm having the, I'm having the same thought myself. I'm having the exact same thought myself. Maybe we'll, yeah, make so, <laughs> maybe we'll do an open mic night on the show. Um oh yeah, yeah, it seems well, like a great idea. Nothing like amateur comedians coming into an amateur late night show to tell amateur jokes. I mean, it's I mean, I'm not getting paid, are you? Oh, you're not getting paid. No. Okay, I should get that screenshot. Hold on. Let's do that again. Oh, wait. God damn you, Nintendo! <laughs> Nintendo buttons! Hold on, let's try that one more time. Let's try that one more time. Hold on, here we go, here we go. You can't blame that one on Nintendo buttons. There we go. I got it, I got it. Can we see the green room? Um, yeah, why not? Let's, uh, let's go, let's, let's, let's go take it, let's, let, let's take a quick look at the green room. I'm gonna, I'm go, gonna up go back to my drums for the time. Okay, yeah, go back to your drums. Yeah, Kate, come on this week. I'll have you. I'll have you as a guest on the show this week. Anytime, we'll make it work. Um, so over here, again, all I did was take the wallpaper uh, that was already in this room um, and replace it with green wallpaper. And yeah, my God, Naomi is still here. She really hasn't left. That's that's hilarious. Uh, so this is the green room. Uh, it's really just my office, but with green wallpaper. I actually kind of like the green now that I'm here. Um, I really should, I, I should, I should think about, um, oh, that's true. If you had left, it would have paused the show. That's a really good point. What a considerate guest Naomi is. Thank you. What a, what a, what a, what a, what a nice person. Thank you so much for being such a considerate guest. Oh, commercial breaks. That's a good idea as well. Commercial breaks is a good idea. Um, Let's do, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. I kind of want to do a commercial break. Hold on. I kind of want to do a commercial break. I'm going to, give me a second here. We're going to work on it. Let me get back down to the set. God, I want to just do this all day. I got so much to do today, but like, I don't want to stop making this show because it's so much fun. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to my desk here. And yes, and commercial break would also be a good way for guests to, leave without causing yeah it's true it's a really good point for a guest to leave without actually causing uh any interruption uh to the show not um, to mention i wouldn't have to pretend that i didn't just go to the bathroom right 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 absolutely absolutely right so um let's take let's take a moment um for a quick commercial break and uh let's just double check my settings here there we go um outro. oh my god this and and today's episode of the show of Animal Talking um, is brought to you by Kellogg's Nutrigrain. What? What? Oh yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> Larry, a quick.
quitting the company and starting my own. And by the way, I feel great. Oof. Steve, you're a great guy with great skills. You're gonna do great. What the hell? I'm coming with you. Oof. Hey! You're hot and I feel great. Let's get married. All right, but I want lots of kids. Me too. Five hundred dollars. What's up? Me, I'm up and I feel great. You feel great? Yeah, really great. Go ahead and hit me. Ooh! <laughs> you do feel great. I just shattered my hand. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Get Cooper on the phone right now. Steve, this is Bill. He owns this place and he's got more money than God. I'm filthy rich. I'm always tan and I got a great ass too, but my marriage sucks, so I hate my life. Bill, I'm Steve. I'm marrying a girl just because of her looks, and we're rushing right into making babies. Steve! I got no income because I just quit my job, and I don't care because I feel great. Yeah! 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 Thanks so much, Kellogg's, uh, for supporting the show. Uh <laughs> what the hell was that? Have you never seen that? <laughs> I don't know if that was a real commercial or if it was ever shown or if it was just like a thing that they... I don't know, but I mean, it looked professionally produced, so I don't know if that was, if that was ever really actually made. I, I mean, obviously it was made, but whether or not that was actually commissioned by Kellogg's or was actually made by a real ad agency. Maybe it was done as like, you know, a mock-up, like hey, here's the kind of, here's the kind of crazy, like as a pitch, or if it yeah. was ever actually used, I don't know. But it's something that, you know, from the early, early days of the internet. Uh, oh, Kate says she remembers seeing it on TV. Oh, so, and that would have been up in Canada. So Naomi, would you like me to run another commercial so you can get out of here? If you want to go wait by the airport, I can run another commercial <laughs> and then your character can leave without interrupting the stream. All right, so let me let me find another. <laughs> John Vignoki is in the chat. We were just talking about Johnny V. I'm here with Adam Nickerson, celebrity Nintendo developer. Johnny, <laughs> as a, as an actual representative, an employee, a very senior, big big man at Nintendo, I want to have you on the show. And I, while you're in the chat, I'm going to get you to commit to it right now. I want to see you on the show. I want I want you to commit to being a guest. Come on the couch. Talk about your talk about working at Nintendo. Talk about Animal Crossing. Talk about your life. Get in here. Get over here. I want you as soon as possible to come on the show and be a guest. I look forward to seeing you uh, on Animal Talking. So let's tr let's check this one out. Will it be chips or jacket spuds? Will it be salad or frozen peas? All right, I'm gonna deck out. Okay. Will it be mushrooms? Right Thanks, on Gary. Rings. Bye. Nice, nice meeting you, Nick. Happy Thank you. Nice Bear you. Giant introduced Steakhouse Congrats Grills. Pure thing. ground beef that right. you cook like a steak and serve like Later. a steak. What will you give your old man with his Steakhouse Grill? Oh, um, when you go to commercials, Gary, which we probably haven't done you. to you, it's going to hear this, but you should probably Bird's Eye Steakhouse Grill. Discord now in land, as well as beef. <laughs> yeah, so in the future, or, 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 you, or you could just shut the fuck up. You know, I mean, that, 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 that would, that would also work. Um, um, <laughs> what was, I don't even know. I think I just shat myself at the desk or something. I don't know what that was. Uh, One note with about, us. uh, Johnny V yeah. is, uh, I met him once, uh, and he, he is probably one of the most polite. Oh, to a fault lovely people i've ever met unfailingly unfailingly polite and just just a lovely lovely guy um and that's why i want to have him on the show not, not just because he's like mr big bollocks over at nintendo um but also because he's just a nice guy so let's wrap up adam thank you yes. for being a part of this experiment oh thank you for having me i look forward to uh doing the rim shot many many times you were great Wait. you were great I, I, you know i i, I kind of want to i kind of want to mess around with it let me try, let me try the drums here i'm gonna try them oh, oh yeah oh yeah uh did you, you know really you, wail on him if you push the raccoon he makes a noise too does he really yeah oh he does yeah oh god it's like <laughs> that thing's alive as if it wasn't enough of an abomination <laughs> It's saying like just kill me. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're gonna wrap up the we're gonna wrap up the show right now. But then once we're done, uh, we are going to uh, raid someone. Um, so uh, thank you everyone 
for joining us in this experiment, the very first episode of Animal Talking. Many, many more to come, I'm sure. Uh, you guys have been great. You've been a wonder. You've been uh, a wonderful part of, of uh, making this experiment a success. And look forward, look forward to more evolutions. We're going to have music. We're going to have comedy. We're going to have celebrity guests. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, this is my new career. This is career number one. Screenwriting is now career number two. Uh, I feel like this is the the, the beginning of the end uh, in many ways uh, for me. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Adam's going to play us out. Here we go.